In this video, I will show you how to make this exact simulation in Blender. As always, it is going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing S, then Shift Z to scale the object only on the X and Y axis. And then we can go into Edit, Preferences, and then make sure to enable the Bool tool, which is included in Blender, which enables us to make some holes. And then press Shift A, and let's add a cylinder. And then you can press S to scale. And then you need to press Tab to go into Edit Mode, go to Face Selection, hold in Shift and select both faces. And then press N and set the Make Value to 1. That way these faces will stay flat when we add the Subdivision Service modifier to increase the number of polygons and make it smoother. Okay, and then we can apply the modifier and then hold in shift and select the other object, and then use the bool tool and difference. And that adds the hole. And then next, we're going to add a ball. So press shift A, and then a cube. And then you can press numpad seven for top view. And then we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier and set it to six, apply the modifier, then press tab for edit mode, and then press shift alt S, then one, to make this a perfect sphere. And then you can press S to scale it up in object mode. And then G then set to grab it on the selectors. And then I'm just going to grab it a bit on the side. And that's how you get a perfect sphere. And then we can press Control S to save, give the file a name and save it wherever you want on the computer. And then next, we can add the rigid body physics. We're of course going to set the shape to sphere. And then for the dynamics, we're going to set it to 0.35 and 0.6, which in my opinion looks the best. These are of course arbitrary values. So uh, add wherever you want to. And then we're going to add some passive physics to the floor with the hole. And set the shape to mesh. And then I'm going to increase the friction value slightly. Okay, and then to make sure it works, we can do a test by uh, selecting the sphere, press G then set to grab it on the z-axis, and then press R then Y to rotate the other object on the y-axis. The uh, physics work, so press Control set to undo. And then next we can press Control shift s to create a new save. Okay, and then next, we're going to add the object which pushes the ball. So we'll add a cube, then press G, then X to grab it on the X axis, and then G, then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then next, we're going to add the subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons. And then we're going to use loop cuts to shape this object. Okay, so let's start off by scaling it up on the y-axis. So press S, then Y to scale it on the y-axis. And then press Tab to go into Edit Mode. And then inside Edit Mode, we're going to press Control R to add loop cuts. And then we can start shaping the club head of the golf club. It's obviously not going to be very realistic. I'm just trying to make a cool object that we can use for the simulation. So uh, just press Control R, and then we can shape it from there. I'm just eyeballing the shape, and then you can make changes later on if you want the uh, look to be different. So hold in Shift to select multiple edges, and then press G then Y to grab them on the Y axis. And then G and then Y for the y-axis. And then I'm going to save one more time, Control Shift S. And then I'm going to press Control R once again on the side that hits the ball. And then press Shift H to hide the rest of the objects. And then I'm going to select this part and I press G then set to grab it on the z-axis. 
You can also use proportional editing if you want to. As I said, I'm just eyeballing this part and making it look cool. And then I'm just going to do a few more changes on the model. And then we can go to the next step. So press G then set, so grab it on the set axis. And then we can select this part, edge select, and then press G then Y. So I'm going to give it this shape. And then I'm going to go to face selection again and press G then set, to grab it on the set axis. And then next, we can go to edge selection, turn off proportional editing. I'm just going to make it slightly less flat. Okay, so I think that looks nice. The next step of the tutorial will be to make the shaft and the grip. So let's move the cursor to the selected object and then add a cylinder. Press S to scale and then press G to grab. And then S to scale once again. And then S then set to scale it on the axis. Then go into edit mode, select the faces on each side and then set the increase value to one so that these faces stay flat when we add the subdivision surface modifier. Okay. And then next, I'm going to select the bottom face and press S to scale it up. And then press E, left click, S, then E to make a smaller extrusion. And then once again, press E, left click, S, then E once again to make a larger extrusion and then S to scale. Next, we can make the grip and the shaft a bit smoother by uh, first pressing Ctrl A to apply all transforms and then switch to edge selection and then hold in Alt to select the edge loop and then press Ctrl B for bevel and use the mouse wheel for additional segments. And then you can do the same for this part and do the same for the handle. So Alt and then Control B. And then next we can rotate the shaft and the handle by pressing R then X to rotate it on the X axis. And then next we can set the origin point to the actual object. And then you can press S, then shift set twice to scale it locally on the X and Y axis. And then G, then set twice to grab it locally on the Z axis. And then I'm also going to uh, grab some of the edges on the X axis. And then once again, you can press Ctrl R to add some uh, loop cuts. And I'm just going to add a few to make the edges a, a bit harder. So something like this. And then next, you can press Alt H to make the rest of the objects visible again. And then you can press R then X to rotate the club on the X axis. Okay. And then you can also scale it on the X axis and rotate the shaft on the x-axis as well. Then next we can join the club head and the shaft. So press Ctrl J to join them after selecting both of them. And then next we can select the uh, floor and then press tab, go to face selection and then press G then X to grab the face on the x-axis. Then I'm going to grab the uh, club and the ball as well on the x-axis and then move it a bit closer. And then next I'm going to keyframe the location of the club and then let's go a few frames forward and then I can move the club. So let's uh, grab it a bit on the x-axis and I'm also going to rotate it slightly. So something like this. And then you can press I and I to keyframe once again. And then we also need to add some rigid body physics to the club. D 
the shape is going to be mesh and let's set the friction to 1. Also notice that the type is passive with the animated setting. Okay, and then next I'm going to experiment with some different locations on the timeline for the end of the animation. Let's try to make it a bit faster and see what happens. As you can see, that's a bit too fast. Still a bit too fast. Let's try this one. That looks okay, but let's uh, see what it looks like for the next frame. I think that looks a bit cooler, so let's uh, set it to 14. And then the end frame to 110. And then I'm just going to do some small adjustments to the shape of the club. And then next, we can start setting up the lighting. So let's turn the light into a sun and set the strength to 5. Then we can use the Cycles Render Engine and the GPU if you have one. If not, just keep using the CPU. Okay, and then we can set up the uh, background image as well. You can find free background images in the link in the description. And then we can add some materials for the different objects as well. For the sake of time, I'm going to add some very basic materials. So I'm just going to use a glossy shader and then make the floor black and then make the ball blue. And then you can play around with the different colors and the different settings. And then for the club, I'm going to add two materials. You can press L to select the linked vertices. And then I'm going to assign a special material for the uh, club head. I'm going to use a glossy shader. And then a uh, different glossy shader for the shaft and handle of the uh, golf club. Now, if you want the golf club to go back to its original position, you can just select the first keyframe in the timeline and press Shift D to duplicate. And there you have it. And then we can set up the camera, press Ctrl Alt Numpad Zero to set up the camera, camera to view, and then let's set it up around here. And then next, we need to set up the uh, output settings. So I'm going to set it to 4K. If you want 1080p, you can just leave it at 100%. And then you select a folder for where you want the final animation to be saved. I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Toots. Save the file one more time. And I also recommend baking the simulation before you start the render in case you want to pause something. So let's go to cache and then bake the simulation so that everything is saved. And then you can go to render and then render animation. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and subscribe for more Blender content.